good to be in the house. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace Church, service number two on this Sunday. My voice isn't back all together yet, but uh, we'll work on that. It's just good to be home. Gone for about four weeks, and all the guys that filled in for me, what a great job they did. The best part was the Word of God was opened up every time, and sermons, messages came right from the Word in its context according to its whole counsel. So it's just good being back. Um, I got to confess to you, I knew about the choir before I left because I got that last song on a YouTube thing from my daughter. After two minutes of just listening to it, I called Landry right away and I said, we need a choir. So that was about four weeks before I went. So I knew that was happening. <clears throat> Here's the good part. I won't ever be in that choir. <laughs> but, uh, man, a lot of work went into that and just excited, but glad you guys are here. About three weeks ago, many of us who read through the Bible together, I mean, it's just one of the things we do. We came up to First Chronicles, and that's the part of the Bible, you know, where it gets really boring really quick, because it goes through all the genealogies for nine chapters. But yet in the middle of those nine chapters is chapter four and verse nine, which if you're me, goes back 45 years in my life. So every year when we get to 1 Chronicles 4, 9, and 10, I get to be refreshed, memories, all the things that go with that. Oh, but this year, it actually tied together with a book that I was reading, and I stopped and thought about it. I thought, you know what? I just need to go home and remind our church, some of you for the first time, about Jabez. And why, for me, he was one of the first heroes I ever had. So if you have your Bibles right there, turn with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 1 Chronicles and chapter 4 and verse 9. 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9. It's on page 488. We're going to hang out there together today. And so uh, if you don't have a Bible, one's right there in front of you somewhere or look it up on your cell phone. But 1 Chronicles 4 and chapter 9. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I haven't been here in so long. My name's Pastor Bill. And they still let me come here and preach, which I'm very grateful for. Very, very, very grateful. You have no idea how thankful I am to be a part of this church. You know, one thing I know at 63 years of age, I know this is my home. And I also know that Western and Plains is the intersection God has given to us. After all these years, I know that to be true. So God bless all the other churches, wherever they are, but don't come to this intersection. <laughs> this intersection was given to us by God. And people drive in from all over the place to come here. I'm humbled by that. And if I said it this way, I still believe the best is yet to come. I believe that. I can actually see it today. Don't you guys know it's like the end of July, you're not supposed to be here and Everybody's here, first service. We had four people get saved in first service today. And I say that because there might be four people or two people or 30 people, I don't know, that this is the day God's made for you to say yes to Jesus. If it is, here's my counsel. Say yes to Jesus and get saved. But there's so much more that comes after salvation. It's actually a part of salvation. We call it sanctification, what God wants to do with your life. First Chronicles chapter 4 and verse 9, if you guys could stand with me as we read this little passage, two verses. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause 
pain. So, God granted him what he requested. James would say it like this, you have not because you ask not. Jesus in our scripture reading, to the one that keeps asking, keeps seeking, keeps knocking, by the way, it's in the present tense in Matthew chapter 11, or Matthew chapter 7, excuse me, that's Luke chapter 11, it's in the present tense. There's something about when God's people keep praying. Let me, let me just see a visual real quick. Did, did anybody pray for Pastor Bill and Cindy while we were gone? Anybody do that? Anybody at all? Cindy's really glad you prayed because we didn't have hardly any arguments at all in the car. I didn't run out of gas anywhere. And we got back safely. See, I don't know where you're at theologically, but you need to know, I actually believe God answers prayer. Some today think, well, God is sovereign. He's got it all figured out. God is sovereign, and it is all figured out. But somehow it's a relationship that what we ask for, what we seek, how we knock, a heavenly Father knows what's best for me, what's best for you. It doesn't mean you get everything you want, but it does mean he knows how to answer your prayers. For some in the room, often in my life, you have not because you ask not. So whose fault is that? Mine. Yours. I'm here to ask God to bless us today. We'll see how God answers that prayer in the next hour. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for this little tiny paragraph tucked away in First Chronicles. I pray that by the power of your spirit, you would bring it to life in all of us. That each one of us, Lord, would hear from your word what we need to hear. Some here might need encouragement, others conviction, a few maybe even salvation today. I pray, Lord Jesus, you would speak clearly to our hearts we, we invite you, Lord Jesus, into this place. We, we don't assume you're just going to show up, so we actually invite Jesus to come in here and move amongst these, these chairs. More importantly, to move amongst our hearts. We would ask the Holy Spirit that you would send the Holy Spirit to anoint us, to baptize us, Lord. I would pray that for everybody in the room, whether they agree with it or not. I pray that that could happen today. And that your word could accomplish its perfect work. That we would cooperate, we would listen, we would heed the message today that you would have for each one as well as for all of us together. So we trust you, Lord. Thank you that you're such a good, good father. And I thank you for Grace Church, what's happening here across the board. I mean, I'm so humbled by that. But at the same hand, it's not an accident, it's not coincidence, it's not that we lucked out. There's people that have prayed for decades And those prayers are still being answered today. So for your grace and your goodness and just the love of God, I thank you, Lord, and I do thank you for each one here today. Surprise us again with your presence and your grace. We thank you for our salvation, Lord, and that the only one that deserves glory and honor would be the Lord Jesus. So Jesus, we pray all of this, that you might receive the honor that you deserve. It's in your name, and all of God's people would say, so you should still have your Bibles out. Let me have you flip back a few pages to 1 Chronicles chapter 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 1. 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 1 in case you closed your Bible. It's on page 484 of a seat back Bible. And as we see the context of where these verses show up, let me just remind you that way back in the day 45 years ago, About 46 years ago is when I got saved, but 45 years ago is when I first encountered Jabez. That's 25 years before he wrote the book. Remember the book? Because way back in the day, there was no book, the prayer of Jabez. There was just Jabez, but has been in the book the whole time for anybody to discover. 
And when I discovered him, he became one of my best friends. Let me share with you how that happened. Matter of fact, it was three weeks ago. We're reading through First Chronicles, and you know, you get to chapter one, and I already get the vibe, even all of you that so faithful to read through the Word of God to learn what God would have for you today. Do you remember chapter one and verse one about three weeks ago? Adam, Seth, Enosh, uh, Canaan, Mahaliel, uh, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, blah, 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 blah. You say, what is all that? All those names. And you say, well, that's why they say the Bible's boring. Not if that's one of your names. We'll get to heaven and we'll say, hey, Enosh, what's one of your favorite verses? He's going to say, First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> and we say, why would you? Because my name's there. You say, well, how long does that go on? For nine chapters. You got name after name after name after name after name. So that's where we as Bible readers, we become speed readers. Well, that didn't take any time at all. And we know, don't we know, that really technically is no boring part, but it's boring to us. But if you're studying you know, the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're looking at the lineage, if you're trying to figure out the tribes and all of that, every name in every line and verse is very, very important, especially Judah, especially Judah, because don't we know that's the tribe Jesus comes from? But to be honest, I'm the same way. Like, I don't see a lot of application for Pastor Bill in Amarillo, Texas there. Until you come to chapter 4. You have all these chapters. God bless his word. Thank you, Lord. But then finally in chapter 4, name after name after name, God stops for two verses. The Holy Spirit stops. And it's like a neon sign. I mean, if you're actually treading through these chapters and finally you get to verse 9, it's like the Lord says, hey, i got to tell you something about this guy named Jabez. What? Yeah, if you hadn't gone through all those names, you might miss it. Or if you don't read through your Bible, you could miss it. If you weren't on the vibe of 20 years ago, you might have missed that book that sold 10 million copies New York Times best-selling list, The Prayer of Jabez. Can, can I just be honest with my congregation today? Is that okay? Is that okay? This book ticked me off. The Prayer of Jabez ticked me off. And you say, why? He stole my sermon. Oh, yeah, you come along in the year 2000, you write a book and you sell 10 million copies. I've been preaching Jabez almost verbatim to what you put down in print for 25 years. See, you'd have to go way back into my life. When I first got saved, 16 years of age, 1972 motorcycle, and that God could take an idiot a loser to Bible college so I could never to become a pastor, never to speak publicly, that I could go to Bible college to learn more about Jesus. So I, I fell so in love with the one who loved me that he took my place. And then somehow in that Bible college, somehow learning to read the word, and then somewhere way back when I'm about 19, so save two and a half to three years, somewhere then, all of a sudden, First Chronicles chapter four, the loser Jabez like stood out like a neon light to me. And even with my limited skills, I could look at it and say, hey, the guy prayed and God answered. 
I'll bet there's a sermon there. So I'd have to take you back to Factoryville, Michigan, and that little church where Cindy and I got married, and then the first time I dropped the Jabez sermon that God gave to me 45 years ago. You say, well, why are you bringing it back? Well, because it was pretty good way back then. It's still really good today, and I've learned a lot more stuff. You say, well, what's the point? Not to tell you my stories. The point is to get you to pray. Because sometimes if we don't read the Bible or pay attention, we'll think, well, you know, it's kind of working out. Everything's good, kind of big enough. Whatever's going on in my life is just fine. Not with what God wants to do. So with your permission, well, really, I'm not going to ask you. We're going to do it anyways. We're going to study Jabez today. We'll be back to Titus next week if the Lord doesn't come first. Chapter 3, study ahead. By the way, on Wednesday, we'll be in Luke chapter 14. Uh, Here's the sermon title for Luke chapter 14, at least the part we're looking at. Guess who's coming to dinner? And when Jesus comes to your house for dinner, you'll never forget it. You guys ready? Some of you are thinking, he's already started preaching. I haven't started preaching. Let the clock begin now. Love you guys. Thank you for letting me come back. The biggest loser, Jabez, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Why would we even pay attention to this guy? Well, look at what it says. The Holy Spirit, right there in chapter 4, verse 9, says, Now Jabez was more honorable. Can I hear you say honorable? Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And you say, what brothers? Well, all the brothers we've been looking at for four chapters. Then specifically in chapter four, all the brothers of Judah. And then very specifically, the brothers right there around Jabez when he was alive. That somehow out of all the brothers, Jabez was more distinguished, was more honorable than the rest. I want to know why. Like, what's the deal? I thought we were all the same. Are are you telling me there's like an honor roll? Are you telling me there's like a hall of faith? Are you telling me that like somebody can be better than somebody else by the way they live their life in grace? Yes. Well, I thought we were all the same. We are and we're not. We're all saved the same. We're all loved the same. We're all part of the church the same. If you haven't said yes to Jesus, say yes to Jesus so that you can be a part of the body of Christ. Amen? But since 45 years ago, I read Hebrews chapter 11. Wow. Those dudes and dudesses did some extra stuff, and God was proud of them. Now, I already know that God is my father, my Abba. He's my father, but you know what? I also know as a child how I respond to his grace, how I grow in my relationship. Do you guys have kids? Anybody got kids? Have you ever noticed it's a day-to-day, da-da-da, some days good, some days bad? I want to know why he was more honorable than his brothers. Why God would stop on this Jabez and brag about him for two verses. The only two verses in the Bible about him. You might say the shortest biography, and he became like my little hero. I hope you have heroes. There's one hero of the Bible, his name is Jesus. But then the Bible's full of other men and women and children that had the same kind of stuff like us. And the same God that knew not only how to save them, but then use them for his kingdom. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mama, his mother, called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. 
You see, the first thing I find out about Jabez, he's a man with a problem, a handicap, a stigma. How come your dad didn't name you? Your mama named you what? Jabez. I cause pain. I cause problems. I cause sorrow. Not that I did cause it. No, I still cause it. What mother would name her child loser? A very angry mom. Jabez is not a compliment It's a handicap, a stigma that he will have to live with, a problem for the rest of his life. Oh, I'm so glad none of you have problems. I'm so glad you were raised by perfect parents. I'm glad there was a silver spoon in your mouth when you were born. Or maybe we have a lot more in common with Jabez than we thought. My dad used to tell me I was adopted when I was a baby. And growing up, something about, something about being two, three, four. <laughs> I am? <laughs> oh, that wasn't my handicap. That wasn't my pain. I'm grateful that I had a, a mother that loved me. Hey, mother of Jabez, why would you ever name him loser, sorrow, painful, problem? Because in childbirth, he was extra painful. I've been with my, my dear wife three times when she had our three children. I find out that the Bible's actually true, Genesis 3.15. Because of sin, we are cursed. And mamas, you already know, part of that curse is it's painful to bear children. Can I tell you the Bible is true? Some have more pain than others. I do know with all three of mine, I stopped praying for the children being born and started praying that my wife would not die. And thanking God I'm not a woman, I'm a man. (laughs) Don't let my wife die. And praise God, he answered that prayer. Maybe he was a breech baby. He came out backwards. That would be extra pain. Maybe the dad had already died, and it's not good timing to have a child. Maybe she didn't know who the dad was. Aren't you glad she kept her baby? And that every child can be used by God in ways. Here we are thousands of years later still talking about Jabez and his mom who named him Pain. Well, hey, Jabez, you get to play the victim card. I mean, hey, just the government will take care of you. I'm sorry, but, you know, you're a loser. You're painful. And so I I guess that's just the way you're going to have to live. Put it in context. Remember going to school, my last name is Gem, and I would always get scared when the teacher's going through and saying, you know, is Johnny here? Is Danny here? And then a William, a Billy, Jun, Gim, Gim, Gem. And I would get nervous because out of 12 years, only a couple got it right. No, that's Gem. Thank you, Gem. Gem. Can you imagine sitting there in third grade and she's going down through the list? Loser, loser. I cause pain, I cause sorrow. Are you here today? 
Oh, worse than that, junior high when they're trying to figure out sides for volleyball. And guess who wants loser on their team? Or from when you go to the bank and you're making your first application for a checking account. For some of you millennials or younger people, that's what you do at the bank. I know, I just made fun of you, I'm sorry. Loser. Oh, you want to you wanna buy a car or a house? <laughs> I cause pain. Nothing but problems in my future. Well, just come to Jesus and let him save you. He'll get rid of all your problems. That's not the gospel. That's not the Bible. You come to Jesus with your name and your problems, guess what? You'll be saved and still have the same name, the same problems, the same handicap that you had before you came. Have you figured that out? It wasn't my name. It was my brain. I don't know why of all the gems that my brain didn't get the same synapsis, the same connection, the same ability. I look at my brother and my sisters and I think, no wait, I'm the oldest, I should have I plowed through first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade. I could not read. Not even close. I couldn't spell at all. By the time I hit sixth grade and seventh grade, my mom sent me to a tutor in Orlando, Florida. Maybe during the summer she can help him. You know what I did? I faked it. Back during the baby boomers coming through junior high and high school, they didn't care anyways. They just graded you on a curve. Just get him out of here. Pass him through. Until you get to the point where it really matters. Like in high school where you have to give a speech. Or you really want to go to that Bible college and you can't figure out how to fill out the application right. Or you get to the Bible college and then they start to wonder, some of the professors or students, why in the world are you here, loser? Oh, they never said it. Forty-five years later, I refuse to play Scrabble with anybody. <laughs> Especially my grandchildren who could beat me in a minute. My brother is actually amazed that I can stand here and speak and that you can understand it. Oh, I've learned how to read a little bit, but for me, it's work. I spent the whole month while I was gone just trying to read a book that my nephew read in a day. You say, Pastor Bill, we need to find another church. No, you need to find the God that saved Jabez and the God that saved me, and I still have to wrestle with the same problem. Because here's what could happen. All of a sudden, you figure out what your problem is, and you think, I can't be used by God. Well, don't tell God, because God's actually looking for the foolish things, the weak things, the base things, the things that cannot glory except in his grace. And if that happens to be you, or me, or Jabez, God would say, perfect for the job. But then don't we think, don't we think, well, I guess I'm just going to wake up and he's going to zap me. I'll just get zapped. No, maybe you're going to have to learn how to pray the Jabez prayer or the Matthew 7 prayer or the Luke chapter 11 prayer, the one that keeps seeking and knocking and asking. You say, when does it get easy? Heaven? 
By the way, he did all the work for salvation. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about the blessing of God, being used by God. I don't know about you. I, I, I want to be like Jabez. My, my ability that I, did not increase with my brain. And some of you can say, yes, we can attest to that. You make up more words and put things together that nobody else in the history of mankind has, but we understand you somehow. How does that work? The goodness of God. Jabez was more honorable than his bros. And his mother named him Jabez, saying, I caused all this pain when he was born. I caused sorrow. I'm a loser. Well, what do losers do? Notice what Jabez in his prayer, which is the heart of the, the message. Because I bore him in pain, verse 10, and Jabez called the welfare department with the IRS and said, you know what? I think I'm just going to need a check with the rest, for the rest of my life. No, Jabez moved to another country and changed his name and hid under you know, his identity. Jabez said, I guess I'll just be a loser and I'll live under the railroad tracks somewhere. That's what so many people do. Jabez called on the God of Israel. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not just any God. Jabez called on the God of Israel. You see, he's old enough, long enough, there's enough, enough history. You already got the tribe of Judah. You got all those other names, and Jabez, no. I'm, I'm going to God with my problem. I'm going to God with my problem. Not any God. I'm going to the only God, the God of Israel. Amen? That's still the God I go to. You say, prove it. Well, look at the Israeli flag in our mall area. But I never go to him as Elohim or Yahweh or Adonai or even Jehovah. I don't. I never say, oh, great God of Israel. I don't. Romans chapter 8 and Galatians chapter 4, because I've said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ and because the Holy Spirit really has sealed me, and especially when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I get to go to my Father in heaven. He's Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh. Yes, he is, Jehovah. But for me, he's Abba, my Father. Because I've said yes to Jesus, he loves me like a son or a daughter. Not a stepson, a son. My daddy died in March of this year. I never called my dad Mr. Frederick Charles Gem II, ever. Do you know why? He's my dad. I called him Pops. With my Abba Father, I can call him Daddy. You say, why? Because of a relationship that grows. And did you know my father, my Abba, my daddy, actually wants me to ask him for things? Did you know that? Now, he's going to supply everything, but there comes a time where he's delighted when I ask. That's why Jesus said, keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. Not for salvation and not for the prosperity gospel. I reject that but just for God's blessing. This is a true story. I didn't know about the story until uh, this trip, matter of fact. Can I see a picture of Cindy with her sister, Jeannie? We're in Marshall, Michigan. We're at some garden show. I'm getting bored out of my mind, but those ladies are having fun. And uh, so I took a picture. But somehow, Cindy with her best friend, Jeannie, you know, they're enjoying all the flowers and stuff. But they got talking about what it was like growing up in Dad Johnson's house. Dad Johnson, boy, a preacher, independent. I mean, Factoryville, Michigan, all that kind of stuff. I, I, that's where I learned about Jabez. But they got comparing notes. So Cindy being the older, Jeannie being the second. And they, same father, same house, same rules. 
Jeannie somehow shares with her sister all the times that she would ask dad for money. And so he said, what? Well, yeah, like if I'm going to the store, dad, can I have 20 bucks? I'm going over here, can I have 20 bucks? And dad Johnson would always give Jeannie 20 bucks. Do you know how much dad Johnson gave Cindy? Do you know why? She never asked for it. Wow. I'd like to add up everything Jeannie got, and somehow we should make up for that. Like, no, that's a joke. <laughs> that's why James would say, you have not because you ask not. And I'm not talking about money. I'm just talking about the blessing of what God wants to do in your life. And if you think you're going to wake up Monday morning, it's just going to all line up. That is wrong. You're going to wake up tomorrow with the same problems, the same boss, the same family, the same neighbors you've always had. I'm so glad you're saved and going to heaven, but what are you going to do about your ministry, your purpose, your giftedness, your life? Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed, that you, God of Israel, that you would bless me indeed. We read the word bless you, and we think of like when somebody sneezes, and then, have you ever you know, been somewhere you sneeze, and somebody you don't even know says, bless you? Maybe you're one of the ones that do that. Well, that's not what this is talking about. Or maybe you're like me, whenever I get out there with whoever, I, you know, I try to say bless you. I, mean, I think it's a great way that you can just open a door a little bit, whether you're at the bank or restaurant, whatever, you can just say, well, bless you. So far, nobody's ever cursed me out for trying to just bless them. A lot of other doors have opened up that gives me a chance to witness, but bless you, maybe that's what it means. No, 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 not, not this bless you. This is where Jabez, already in the tribe of Judah, with the wrong name, the wrong problem, everything, and he's asking God, the God of Israel, I want you to bless me. My friend who wrote the book, Bruce Wilkerson, can I see a quote by him? To bless in the biblical sense means to ask for or to impart supernatural favor. When we ask for God's blessing, we're not asking for more of what we could get for ourselves. We're crying out for the wonderful, unlimited goodness that only God has the power to know about or to give us. Lord, I'm asking you to bless me indeed. Because in Bible college, they're not going to make me preach a sermon. And this loser is going to have to stand up and try to communicate your word. Lord, I'm asking you to bless me indeed. Because this loser is about to get married to the best thing ever that God gave to Factoryville, Michigan, which is sitting right back there. Lord, I'm asking you to bless me indeed because somehow now this loser is going back to Bible college and they want me to do a home group. Somehow, Lord, 1980, this loser, <laughs> would you bless me indeed? They want me to be a youth pastor at a church here in Amarillo, Texas that today's a funeral home. Lord Jesus, that's a true story, by the way. Boxville Brothers, great funeral home. That's a bad church, though. So. Anyways. <laughs> Not Boxville Brothers way back in the day. Lord, we're, we're about to start Grace Community Church. I'm 29. My wife's about a month from our third child. And they want me somehow to be pastor. That was 34 years ago. Would you bless me in day? indeed? Would you bless me? Would you bless me? Because what I know and what most of my friends in the room know, if you're a visitor, it won't take you very long until you'll know too. It's only by the blessing of God that I can do any of it. It's not my ability, it's not my personality, it sure is not the way I can read and write. It's by the grace of God, it's the spiritual gift he gave me. And when I'm gone four weeks, haven't used my gift, this thing happens. What if it doesn't work?
My heart rate was 109 before first service this morning. What were you so nervous about? The same thing I was nervous about at the library yesterday. Lord, I don't know if it's going to work. And it will not work if it's based on my loser ability. It only works when I give all that I can give in study. And then God supernaturally answers the prayer, I still pray today. You say, how do we know you prayed that prayer? Because I wrote it on my hand again, like I do every Sunday and every Wednesday, that God, if you don't come through, it ain't going to work. What's the point of the sermon? What are you praying for? What are you personally praying for? And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed and specifically enlarge my territory, increase my coast, expand my borders. God, I want to be successful. Everybody's telling me I'm a loser, a failure, that I'm not going to make it. I'm coming to the God of Israel by the grace of God, and I'm praying that you make me successful. Today we would use the word fruitful. I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel that you get everything you're asking for. No, because you're just like me. We'll ask for selfish things. Well, I just want perfect health. You'll get that. It's called heaven with a celestial body. I want you to be in good health. I believe that God can heal. But I also believe God leaves you with the same problem so that you'll understand how much you need to pray. Are you tracking with me? It's the problem for Jabez that got him to pray. Did God give him a new name? No. Did he become successful? Yes. Why? Because he prayed. When I first saw Jabez, I had three things. A black Bible, a black Ford pickup, and a black Labrador retriever. (laughs) And 50 bucks. And have I ever seen how God can expand the territory, the borders, the mountain? the ministry in 45 years. You know how he did that? One person at a time. Just so that I'm very, very clear, can I see the quote I came up with on Friday? This is just a quote by me. The Jabez prayer is not the prosperity gospel. The Jabez prayer is the prosperity of fruitfulness for the gospel. Do you understand the difference? Because there's a boatload of Christians out there saying, I just want perfect health and perfect wealth and have three cars in my two-car garage. Well, God might give you that, but that's not the purpose of the prayer. That's not your purpose in life. I already know your purpose is the same as my purpose. It's fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. And God has a way of pruning the branch, trimming the vine, so that more fruitfulness can happen in your life. Well, I just want him to get rid of that or get rid of that or change me here or this. That's up to God. As God blesses you. To this point, he has not given me a brain that understands very complicated things with language and words. But he has given me an ability that I can pray, and all of a sudden I can understand the Scriptures and can communicate them in ways that only God should get the glory for. You say, well, that's good for you, Mr. Preacher Boy. I'm not a preacher boy. 
Well, I'm not sure what Jabez was either. I don't think he was a preacher boy. It sounds like he was a farmer. Increase my borders. God didn't say, well, why should I? Why should I? You got those borders divvied out to you by Joshua. God answered that prayer. Why would Jabez pray that prayer? Not to get rich, but to be more productive for God. I'm thankful that all of you are not pastors of Grace Church. I wouldn't have much time to preach. But God's put us in all kinds of vocations, all kinds of places, all kinds of things to do what God wants you to do and be successful where you are. You get to represent God at Pantex. You get to represent God at Walmart. You get to represent God in your neighborhood. You've got the crazy neighbor. Glad he's your neighbor, not mine. You get to represent God to him. And when you go and say, God, I just want my, my borders, my life, my vocation. Sabrina's sitting right over there, graduate of Harvard, some lawyer thing, which I did <laughs> right over my head. Talk about prayers answered around the world. That's why it still doesn't make any sense that God would have me and you as friends, and you want to take me to Israel. Why? You don't understand. I'm just a loser who prayed this prayer. Uh, the book I read by Louis Giglio talks about how great of a father we have in heaven, how he's so interested in you and what your passion is. Where do you think your passion came from? Incredible thing about this perfect father. The incredible thing is that he knows everything about everything. Can I hear an amen? amen. God knows everything about everything. He does. He's just as comfortable talking to you about British baking, building a rocket, breaking par on the golf course, binary math, baby strollers, bipartisan let it get let it, oh, there's my gift again. <laughs> bipartisan legislation or bipolar symptoms, as he is reciting the books of the Bible. He's down with graphic art, micro-business, crop management, knitting, even, even the loop stitch, supply-side economics, bioethics, urban design, bird migration, shiplap renovation, or whatever currently occupies your thinking. You don't need to inform God of anything or teach him how to operate the remote or post on social media. He is well able on his own, but more, he's interested in you and whatever you are passionate about. That's not to say he's eager, eager to condone whatever you're producing or the way you're going about your work, no. But if you have a passion for architecture, for artificial intelligence, or the raising of a family, a passion that he has woven into your heart to bring light to the world, he's the father you've always been looking for. You say, well, I'm not a farmer. Well, what are you? God, would you expand my borders? Would you make me successful that somehow with this gift you've given me, I can be the best that can be used by you for your kingdom? That I get to represent you, Lord. Yeah. What, in your neighborhood? Of course. Standing in line at Walmart? Obviously. Wherever that you might go with the blessing of God and the borders being expanded one by one, and it's amazing what happens. By the way, the one by one will show up as a person in your life. You say, what will happen? Well, here's where I'd encourage you. I'd pray that you would want your borders expanded and that you would pray that prayer. And you say, what will happen? Well, you'll probably go out to lunch. What will happen at lunch? You'll probably meet somebody you hadn't met before. Or you'll sit next to them on the bus tomorrow. Or all of a sudden, they're in the cubicle looking at you, you know, right there where you work. And then you realize, well, where did they come from? Who prayed for their borders to be expanded? Jabez is more honorable than all of his brethren. Even though he's got the problem of pain, the wrong name, 
He goes to the God of Israel, oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed, expand my borders. Enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. Your hand with me. Lord, I need your hand with me. You say, what's that? Well, I understand, John 10, that we're in the Father's hand, we're in the Son's hand, and no one can ever pluck you from his hand. I get that. I understand that. But when the Bible talks about the hand of God on you, what are you going to do when the borders are expanded? Boy, now you got to fence those things. you got to mow the grass. you got to climb the mountain. Hey, Lord, I don't know if you know how much is this is going to take. God knows exactly how much it's going to take. I need your power, your presence, your provision. I need the Holy Spirit, Lord, your hand on me. I can't figure this out. Can I see Acts chapter 11? Acts chapter 11, the church is growing. And the hand of the Lord was with them. Great number believed and turned to the Lord. I don't know about you, but that's what I want in my life. That's what I want in Grace Church. For God's hand, his protection, provision, his spirit to be upon us, with us, empowering us. Question. When's the last time you prayed for more influence? When's the last time you prayed for the filling of the Holy Spirit to empower you? When's the last time you prayed that for our church? When's the last time you prayed for that in your family? Could it be that maybe the things that you want to see happening are not happening because you have not because you ask not? Oh, I wish I could go back. Hey, Jeannie got the 20 bucks. Cindy, ask. (laughs) Bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil. Lord, would you keep me from evil? When's the last time you prayed that? Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, would you keep me from evil? One thing I've noticed about people, pastors, that when they are supplied bigger borders and the hand of God is on them, how quickly they can fall into evil, temptation, how quickly it can all be over. Coming back from Denver, you know, Cindy and I made a trip of 4,600 miles in the car Our last rest area we stopped at was just on the west side of Clovis, and I noticed something we had never seen in any other rest stop. Can I see that picture? Warning, watch for snakes. I can tell you at least the rest areas we stopped at in 4,600 miles, we did not see that sign, let alone a corral right next to it. We must be in the Wild West. I wonder if they just put that sign up there for advertisement. Or is it really a warning? What do you think it means? There must be snakes here somewhere. Uh, There was another sign identical to that sign right across from the sign as you're going into the bathroom. Warning! What? (laughs) Well, I already know because of the other sign that, that technically says watch for snakes but you can't read it because somebody's put their bumper stickers all over it, and then somebody else put their bumper. Before you know it, you just like, whatever it says. Isn't that life? I mean, you first get saved, and you know the devil's after you. By the way, the biggest evil against me is not the devil. It's me, myself, and I. I have to look at myself every day in the mirror. But there is a roaring lion seeking who may, may devour. Lord, Keep me from evil. Amazing prayer. Why would you pray this prayer? The bottom line, that you would keep me from evil. Why? That I may not cause pain. Mama said, I would cause pain. I pray I might not cause pain. Everybody in junior high said, I pray God. It doesn't turn out the way they said. In Bible college, they said, I pray, God, it doesn't turn out. What what, communicated to me what they said. Lord, everybody around me still says, I pray that I might not be what everybody said I would be. Let my life be different by your grace than what everybody expected. (laughs) 
Scott Davey can tell you how we prayed that prayer for years. Years at our prayer meeting. And to be honest, the book was written and we thought, ah, now everybody thinks it's a gimmick. It's not a gimmick. Unless you make it, it's not a formula. It's not like magic beads you pull out and if you just say these words, it's not that. It's a relationship with your Father in heaven. And God, I'm asking you to bless me, to expand my borders, to use me. The amazing part about that, so God granted him what he requested. Can I hear an amen? In other words, Jabez asked, and God said yes. God granted him what he requested. If he had never requested it, that paragraph wouldn't be there. Which brings me back to the point. What are you praying for? You say, what should we be praying for? Well, if you have salvation, that's the greatest prayer, right? That you know Jesus. Now you should be praying, Lord, let me represent you well. Lord, would you fill me with your spirit? Would your hand be on me? Lord, would you bring somebody into my life? Would you cause my borders to expand? Lord, please. I want to be like Jabez or John or Peter or Paul. I want my life to count because one day, one day, we'll all be in heaven and we will not be the same. All thankful, thankful for what God has done. But 1 Corinthians 3, 15 tells me there's losers in heaven. A sense of loss. That when our works are tried, wood, hay, and stubble are all burned up. And they don't have anything. Oh, but others, gold, silver, precious stones, they knew how to use their time with the problem for the glory of God. Matthew chapter 7, didn't Nate do a great job reading the word this morning? Aren't you glad we have Nate? You say, where did Nate come from? Jabez. Where did Asher come from? The Jabez prayer. Where did this building come from? 45 years of seeking God. Well, we've been in the building 16, so it'd be 30. 30 years of asking. I sat out there by where the flagpole is, I don't know how many days just praying, God, God, please, please, I just, I'm asking, God, I'm asking, I'm asking. Then God kind of worked it out, and I got really scared. Be careful when God answers your prayer. Because <laughs> then when I got inside of it, I thought, we can't afford the electricity of this place. How's this ever going to work? We need your hand on us, Lord. We need your hand on us. Radio, how did radio ever, the Jabez prayer. Even though I didn't know anything about APEC, how did APEC happen? The Jabez prayer. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7, ask. It's in the present tense. Keep asking and it will be given to you. Keep seeking and you will find. Keep knocking, it will be opened to you. For everyone who keeps asking receives. And he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there amongst you, if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who was in heaven, give good things to those who keep asking him? One of my best friends in life is my daughter, Katrina. We spent a couple weeks with her and Andrew and Simon and grandkids in Virginia. Ten years ago when she moved to Fredericksburg, Virginia, she called me up one day. This is about two years being married, and she said these words, Daddy, I found a pair of boots You found a pair of boots, yeah, they're like $60, but daddy, would you like to split that with me and Simon? No, 
I ain't splitting the cost of those boots with Simon. I'm going to buy the boots myself, baby girl. Why did she get the boots? Because she asked. That's my daughter. God is a good father who gives us what we need, sometimes what we want, but always what's best for his will. Lord, would you expand our borders? Would you expand our coast? Would you increase? When you pray those prayers, God pays attention. Maybe not in your time, but in his time. You take Tabitha back in our children's ministry with Jamie, and I don't know if you know this, but the biggest VBS we've ever had ever in the history of Grace Church. Who's praying for greater borders? Go check out our youth group with Asher and Ruth, and you'll find out that we're busting the seams with junior high and high school kids that are coming. Who prayed for greater borders? Landry, with 12 people up here singing on the stage, let me be a prophet and say, I'll dare say in a year there should be 40 to 60 people up here. Well, how's that going to happen? I'm going to pray for greater borders with this new choir thing, and we'll see what God wants to do. Nate, who read the scriptures to us, where did Nate come from? The Jabez prayer, basically over 45 years. Well, what's he got? God. What else does he have? He's 19. You know what's good about a 19-year-old? They don't know what God won't do, so God sometimes just blesses them anyways. Did you keep track of that? 19-year-olds just think out of the box altogether. So young adults, by the way, young adults is going crazy. So they went to Wonderland Park on Friday. You say, well, yeah, 22 of them went to ride rides. No, 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 no. That's not why they went to Wonderland Park. They went to Wonderland Park on Friday to witness for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, at Wonderland. And you say, where'd they get that idea? It wasn't from me. It must be the Jabez prayer. It must be the Lord Jesus. I don't know what you're looking for, but I, the prayer, the church, the people, Lord, help me. Help me to keep praying for your blessing. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. And I am, Lord, I'm amazed, and we haven't finished anything. Nobody gets glory except you. And I realize how this has been abused so much of the time in the American church, Lord, and selfishness. And yet, you're a good, good father that wants to not just meet our needs, but to bless us. And how we thank you for our salvation, Lord, this free gift that we just received. But also, Lord, that you know how to bless us with our fields and our workplace, our jobs, whatever it might be, how to raise a family, how to be a neighbor, how to be the best church at Western and Plains we could possibly be. Because we come to the God of Israel, our Father, and we ask you, Lord, to bless us indeed. Expand our borders and territory, whether you want to do that with property or the back of the building or radio, Lord, that's up to you. But especially as we leave this place and we mingle with people from all over the panhandle, sometimes around the world, use us, Lord. Expand our borders. that your hand would be upon me and upon us, your hand. The hand of God. Your presence, your power, your spirit, your provision, I pray. that you would keep our church from evil. I bring to you our staff again, our young staff, Lord. Please. 
all the different ones that come and go. Please, Lord, keep us from evil. That we would not embarrass you, Lord, that we wouldn't be a pain, that we wouldn't cause any kind of sorrow. But that you could use us for your kingdom's sake. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it, but we can ask. I pray, Lord, that you would surprise my friends today with new people in their lives, new opportunities. Remind us it's one person at a time and that we would be eager to make a connection and a relationship that could lead to an opportunity to share Christ. So I thank you for Grace Church and the Jabez prayer and the prayer of our Savior. May we keep seeking, I pray. Could be you're here today and you know you don't have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with Jesus. And Jesus knows how to knock on the door of your life. And then you have to make a decision. Do you want that relationship or not? I know we've prayed for that. We've prayed for you. And there might be somebody here in second service like there was in the first. You know you just need to receive Jesus. You need to say, yes, your life is full of problems, full of heartaches, but Jesus took your place. He died so that you can be forgiven. If you know that's you, I'm going to ask you to stand. If there's anybody in the room, anybody at all right now, and you just know, I need to be saved. I need to be forgiven. I need to be healed from my sin. Thank you, sister. Is there anybody else? Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I prayed you guys would be here today, that God would expand our borders. Thank you, brother. That God would expand our borders. He does that one person at a time. Lord, you know our hearts. Nobody gets the credit but you, Lord Jesus. For these that stand, maybe some that are seated, maybe some on the radio, you deserve the salvations, Lord. You paid the price. You took their sins. You took the wrath of your Father. You faced hell itself so I could be saved, that these could be saved. Your desire is a relationship a love connection between you and each one of us. So I pray, Lord, for these that stand. They would know what it is to repent, to turn to you, to trust you, Lord. I pray the Holy Spirit to circumcise their hearts, to invade their lives, that, Lord, they might understand for the first time the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they might enjoy, they might enjoy what it is to know we're not headed for hell but for heaven that you might equip them, Lord, with every good gift. Whatever their problems, whatever their circumstances, that you will be faithful to walk through those things with them. That one day, Lord, so quickly, we'll see you face to face. Save your people. Thank you for Grace Church today, Lord. Thank you for the Lord Jesus. May he receive all the honor and glory, God's people would say. You guys want to thank these ones that are standing? It's good to be home. It's good to be home.